Yo, what is going on everyone? Wolf here, with another Starfield build guide. First off, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope you guys are enjoying some time off and are able to spend some time with your friends and family. I know I am enjoying a little break from work. But in today's video, I am finally going to show you guys how I built the SR-71 Blackbird. This has been a highly requested build for a long time, and I've been putting it off. I felt it was too similar to my very first build, the SR-72 Dark Star. It was the, kind of the video that started this channel. And I feel like what a better way to wrap up the year with almost a tribute to my start here on YouTube. If you've been with me from the beginning, I want to thank you. This year has been really fun for me, and I'm really excited to try some new things next year and continue this journey with you guys. But if you haven't already, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell next to it to stay up to date with all my latest content. All my socials can be found linked below. But without further delay, let's get into the build. For the beginning, I started in the center to build out the main fuselage. Take a docker, attach any 2x1 hab you'd like. I chose all-in-ones just for the sake of this video. Attach a Deimos hull A to the underside, and then attach the reactor to the back. I used the cargo as my building block here, but any piece can be used to merge the grav drive down. Most of you will already know how to do this by now, uh, as well as all of the other glitching methods. But if you do not, and if you're new to my channel, please pause the video, go watch my other glitching tutorial one. It explains all of the known methods you see I'm using in the video in detail. They can be done on both console and PC versions of the game. No mods are required, and no, it will not break the game. No, I also don't believe Bethesda has any intention of patching this either. It has no true gameplay impacts, it is strictly cosmetic, and does not change how the game is played. It just makes you look a hell of a lot cooler doing it. For those of you asking, yes, there is some interior clipping into the cockpit. In order to achieve that aggressive fighter jet look, it's got to be done. I have tried all other combos, but it does not have that same feel. 
I've seen some other creators try the look with the Stroud cockpit underneath and the black Nova cowling is kind of like a mock cockpit, but it doesn't do it for me. I tried it in my last video for the Star Fox R-Wing, and I think it looked good there, but until mods come to console and grant me some more options on parts, this is the best I can come up with. For those modern recreations, this look is by far king. If you're new to the game, or you're a new builder out there, I am using the Outpost landing pad. That will give you access to about 95% of all ship modules. The other 5%, however, is vendor specific. Those parts you will have to find elsewhere. For example, I used the NG20 landing gear. Those are by far one of my favorite parts in the game, but they are also exclusive to New Homestead on Titan. Unfortunately, there is no save draft option in the game yet. So in order to build this, you will need to use an alternative pair until you can fly to Titan and swap them out, or build over a ship that is currently using the NG-20s. Hopefully, with Bethesda's new six-week update roadmap thing they talked about in their most recent end-of-the-year update announcement, we will get some sort of feature that allows us to stop a build partway and then return later for situations exactly like this. Quick sidebar, but if you hadn't read that article, they teased something that kind of got me excited. I've talked about it before and a lot of people are wanting either new vehicles or alternate ways to travel in Starfield, well, that might actually be happening. They mentioned they'll be adding new ways to travel. Fingers crossed. But to me, that sounds like new types of vehicles. They mentioned some other nice quality of life changes as well. I will leave a link to the post down below if you want to check it out.
To save myself some time and make sure this video isn't 30 minutes long, I am only showing you how to construct the one engine and wing, but the build is symmetrical, so just copy everything to the other side. This is what it should look like when it's all put together. This part could get a little confusing, so let me explain. It's not complicated, but the tail fins are snapped to the Deimos hull A's, but we need to fit the supernova engines in there as well. So by using a duplication glitch, you can slide the engines in, and then you can put the Deimos pieces back in. If you don't put the Deimos pieces back though, you will get the unattached module error and that's because the tail fins don't technically snap to the engines, they just sit inside them. Here's where I like to get fancy. With my builds, I like things to look smooth, finished. I don't like odd edges or breaks if I can help it. That's why the NG20s are one of my favorite landing gears. One, they have some of the best stats with the four thrusting power, but they are also very easily hidden. The piece I commonly use with these is the Deimos Docker because it's basically an empty block. There's no interior to it, so you can easily merge parts inside of it. I've done cargo, I've done weapons, but for this build, I put the front landing gear in it, and it makes it look like after takeoff, the landing gear would retract inside like on a normal plane versus just sticking out of the bottom. I also like to hide my weapons, especially on a ship like this where the entire idea is stealth. I just used some particle lasers and missiles for my build, but feel free to hide anything you want down here. There's plenty of room. Uh, I'm even using the weapon stacking glitch so that I can fit the max amount into the small space. And there you go. It's like they weren't even down there. And yes, they are still 100% functional. I do this because I think it just looks cleaner. There's not a lot of junk all over the build. And I went with that classic black and red. Now we're not 100% to scale. In a perfect world, I would have loved to make this ship much longer to capture the true nature of the ship but I am limited by Starfield's 40 by 40 and it kills me. I cannot wait to get my hands on some mods to remove the limitations. Okay, normally I do a bit more to the interiors during these walkthroughs, uh, but for this build, I just used all-in-one halves. This part is super customizable as usual. Feel free to adjust to your needs or your own style. Going back, I probably would have tried to fit a armory or the workshop in here, just because I like to have everything with me whenever I'm fast traveling around. But that about does it for another build guide. Again, I want to thank all of you guys for hanging out for the past few months. It's been a pleasure making content for y'all. I'm eagerly awaiting some new releases early next year to start covering while the Starfield hype begins to slow down. 
I hope everyone has a great holiday, and I'll see you all in the new year. Wolf, out!